everybody. Cindy Utter here with my Artsy Endeavors. Guess what time it is? Yeah. Time for Chapter 7. Um, this is my story, and we're going to work on Chapter 7 today. We're going to work on a couple different emotions. Um, but before we do that, I am going to read a little bit from this You Are Stronger Than You Know. And for Chapter 7, what we're going to talk about is, well... I'm going to read this, but we're going to talk about two emotions. What I'm reading is done by Lane Parsons, and the title is It's Okay. It's okay to be afraid of the things you don't understand. It's okay to feel anxious when things aren't working your way. It's okay to feel lonely, even when you're with other people. It's okay to feel unfulfilled because you know something is missing, even if you're not sure what it is. It's okay to think and worry and cry. It's okay to do whatever you have to do, but just remember too that eventually you're going to adjust to the changes life brings your way and you'll get to the point where the life you live is full and satisfying and good to you. And it will be that way because you made it that way. That is huge, huge, huge in the topic of chronic pain. To know that it's okay. All right. Um, what we're going to talk about today, we're actually uh, going to talk about two emotions. We're going to talk about denial and we're going to talk about fear. So let me grab my paint cart. We're going to do something with these pages. Um, I am going to do some journaling on them and we'll be right back. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. So I didn't do a whole lot of journaling. I just kind of put down my main, um, how I'm feeling at this point, which is denial and fear. I've got now some dilution paints here. I'm not sure why, but I've decided that pomegranate seed, uh, post box red, white and black, which I'm going to turn into gray. I'm going to play with these colors today and let's see what we can figure out. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about these two feelings, denial. We were here uh, last month also on the denial front. And what the actual uh, definition of denial is, is asserting that a statement or allegation is not true. And what's the first thing I said? It can't be this bad. It will pass. It has to get better. This is the denial phase. And this is where, you know, I'm maybe not going to use this paint today. Holy crap. Um, wow. Urgh. You know, I love these paints. I'm not a fan of the pots. Okay, anyways. Um, so denial is looking at, you know, it, it's not that bad. It can't be. We're going to have to fix this. This is a new little spreader toy I found. I was at a, um, I want to say like a flea market, but that's not what it was. It's like a farmer's market slash craft place in New York in Penn Yen called the Windmill. And uh, this was in the kitchen supplies. And of course, you know, I'm not using it in my kitchen. I gotta use it here. So, denial, like I said, that's, you know, um, it, you also get denial when you're trying to face a fact that's uncomfortable. All right, and that, that denial emotion, it sticks with you for a long time. It's like, no, it, it can't be. Just fix it, let's get this together, right? Okay. Then we talk about fear. Fear is, oh my God, what happens if this is permanent? What happens? How do I pay my bills? Um, what about my job? I've been there 23 years. I don't want to lose my job. I plan on retiring from there. You know, oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? All right, so all of that comes into play. With the denial and the fear, uh, sometimes you can actually just get really lost in your own head. And when I say lost, you just, you're to the point you don't know what to do. Um, you don't know if you should be, you know, do I call another doctor? Do I, you know, what do I do? You're so, along with the fear and denial, you're basically lost. And that's the only way I can put that is lost because that's how you feel. You feel like, you know, holy crap. <laughs> what am I going to do now? It's not... They're not fun emotions to um, deal with. And sometimes they get very, um, 
you get very lost in the emotions. Now, before I use this gray, what I'm going to do, I actually probably have a thing of gray around here somewhere, but I just, I want to use these paints. So I'm going to use my white and my black. My black looks gooey. All right, let's use up our white and our black. I'm going to throw some white down here. Throw some black on top of it and just go to town. Perfect. Need a little bit more white. I don't know, can you see this? I'm just playing around with some gray. Gray. So where am I at in this process? You know, I'm still playing the games. Still playing the game of um, paperworks and follow-ups and trying to figure out where we're going and how we're going to get there and how long it's going to take us to get there. And um, Just playing through the whole process, basically. It's difficult. It's not easy. Get some of this paint off here. <laughs> I like these colors. I like it. I like it. And it's funny because I, I, you notice I tended to, and I didn't do this consciously, but um, I went with darker colors, which, you know, normally I'm the pinks and the brights and the blues, and, you know, and I noticed, I just noticed that, you know, for these, this pages, I, I went with the darker colors. And I think maybe because of those emotions, you know, those emotions of those dark colors that, that comes out in the, the fear and the anxiety and I'll take a little bit more of this. I'm gonna use it. Oh, let's do it with this. This is a palette knife. I picked up a pack of them. Um, I believe I was down in North Carolina visiting a friend there and she took me to a Jerry's Artorama. It was so cool. And they had these this pack of palette knives there. And it was so cool. Try it this way. I like it. And this, this anyways, this pack of palette knives had all these different uh, shapes to them. So I got a bunch of them. So it was fun. All right. So um, let's see. Okay, of course, we're. I have my little notebook over here because I went through all my notes and started looking through all the stuff. Um, like I said, I'm still following up on all the calls, the paperwork. Um, part of the paperwork that I had to follow up on was the absence uh, information for my job. Because I'd been there so long, yes, I was allowed a certain amount of time off for my injury, um, but... It was, um, we had to make sure all of the medical paperwork and that kind of stuff was in on time so that I could get approved for my absence and not um, lose my job at that point. So that was one of the big issues at this point that I was following up on. I, I had to make sure all of that paperwork gets in. And let me tell you, it, it's so difficult when... You're trying to make sure all that paperwork gets in, and on top of that, you're dealing with um, the workers' compensation insurance company. You're dealing with all of the doctors. You have to make sure that they all get the paperwork in so that you don't get in trouble. And it's just, it's a huge, huge, huge merry-go-round. I don't know what that is. Um, so it's, it's difficult. It's, it's a hard process. And, you know, I really think they make it that way so that if you don't have an attorney and you're trying to fight this thing alone, you're just going to say the heck with it and give up. So that's where I'm at mentally is the whole denial and the fear. Um, those are emotions that come and go over a period of time. Uh, I wish I could say, you know, you felt the emotion at one point and then that was it. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Um, they come and go. I really like the marks this thing makes. <laughs> so I'm sitting here having fun playing with my mark maker. Um, all right, so 
Like I said, I wish I could say they just come and go, but they don't. They're here to stay. All right, so let me dry this up real quick, and then we're gonna, we need to figure out how we're gonna go about this. Actually, you know, I like that, but something's telling me to take my brayer. What happens? Oh yeah, it just gets rid of all those marks. So we'll just get rid of a few of them here and there. Why not? Let's make a mess of the page. We can, because fear and denial does that to us. It makes us a mess. And if any of you have dealt with this, I want to call it crap, you know exactly what I'm saying. It's not an easy thing. All right. Just clean off the brayer on another page. Okay, let's dry this up and let's see where we're going to go from here. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've spent the last hour looking for a set of alphabet stamps that I have which have big letters on them. And do you think I can find them? No. So anyways, check this out. <laughs> this is a girl that I did back in January of 13. That is when I very first started. So anybody that says you can't draw, the difference between then and now I think is a little bit. So um, it just takes practice. And trust me, I'm not the best. This is just a piece of, um, it's a jelly print on a piece of copy paper. And I've got my archival ink pad here. And what I want to do is I just want to use these stamps I'm going to start out with D-E. D-E. N-I. Where's my N? Um, and what I want to do is I just want to stamp out some of these words. I want to stamp out denial and fear. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. N-I. Okay, i A-L. And I want to do this a few times, and I don't want you guys to be bored out of your mind. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've stamped these all out. I've got quite a few of them here. I've got denial and fear. But before I do that, I need to back this down a little bit. Right now, it's just way too dark for me. <laughs> Surprise. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a stencil, and we are going to... Use some more white, and we're just going to back this down a little bit. Now, um, while I'm doing this, I just want to let you know, at this point in the process of the chronic pain, I am, they've got me on quite a few different medications. They've got me on muscle relaxers. Um, they've got me on painkillers. They've got me on a pain patch, which, believe it or not, all of these lovely things I still use. Um, they're talking about maybe getting some shots, which we're going to get into that. And then they also want a new contrast MRI, which I think I talked about that last week or last chapter. And then also, um, my doctor wants, my surgeon wants a, uh, an MRI of my entire spine. He wants to look at my neck. He wants to look at my, um, the rest of my back. So... <clears throat> These are all things that, you know, along with the, the paperwork, I'm still following, okay, <clears throat> and still fighting with, and I, I apologize, pardon me, I have this, like, frog in my throat, and I think it's because right now it's autumn here in New York, and uh, everything's dying, so um, <clears throat> I think it's allergies, but anyways, so that's where a lot of the paperwork comes from that's where a lot of the following up making sure that my absence plan has all of the information um, calling doctors make sure they send the paperwork by the certain time and it, it's it's a nightmare <laughs> it's the only way to put it when you're going through this especially in the beginning it is so hard because you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you you want to get it fixed you want to get back to work and it just seems like your hands are really tied and everything is so frustrating because it takes so long to get anything done. Um, you know, whether it's having a doctor call you back or making sure the paperwork's in, it just seems like it takes forever. And the only thing I wanted to do at this point was get my butt under the knife, <clears throat> have it fixed, and be done. 
go back to work. That was my plan. Well, needless to say, that didn't work out, as you can tell. So, there, I like that better. It's calmed down. I'm actually going to use some black on this to pop it back out again. So, but that, that makes me happier. Um, those dark colors, I just, I have a hard time using them. And when I looked at it for a while, it was driving me insane. So let me dry this real quick because there are parts of it that's still wet. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start putting our fear and denial on the pages. And we'll see what we can make out of this big happy mess. I'll be right back. All right, I've gotten this stencil out because I'm not happy with this page. <laughs> so we are going to, you know, I wish, any idea how to get this thing to sit flat? I've got stuff on the bottom of it trying to make it sit flat but it won't sit flat anyways off topic oh where are we talking chronic pain it's a monster it's a bad bad monster it does not let you live your life the way you want to live your life so anyways um yeah can you tell i'm in kind of like a little wacky mood today i'm just having fun that's you know I have to. I'm sitting here alone in my house. <laughs> I got to keep myself entertained, right? That's what we do. Um, so fear and denial. Um, the only thing I can say is, you know, it, it takes time to get through these feelings. It takes time to understand why you're feeling them. Um, it's not easy. There's nothing about this entire process that's easy at all. It's very difficult to understand what is happening to you and why. And um, that is the biggest thing is, you know, why? What, what have I done so wrong that now I have to live in this kind of pain? And you really, there's no answer to that. There is no answer. I can say, oh my gosh, well, what I did wrong is I picked up a router. Well, no, I didn't do that wrong. I was doing my job, which is what I was supposed to be doing. So, you know, it's okay. Like that little excerpt that I read there in the beginning, you know, you have to learn. It's okay. Apparently, I was not supposed to retire from that job. Apparently, um, you know, there were other plans in the making for me. And it's just, it's really difficult at the time to realize that it's okay and you get so frustrated and you get so just angry and sad and denial and fear you're so afraid you know oh my god I'm not gonna lose my house I mean my husband and I lived within our means we lived you know with our paychecks and when all of a sudden that one paycheck is gone uh, what happens you know, um, so that fear, that fear is very real. And that fear doesn't just go away. You have to really start thinking. And when that comment was made to me um, by that nurse that, you know, the doctor said this pain's not going away, um, my husband and I sat down and we had some discussions about it because, you know, it looks like I may not have a paycheck coming in. Well, we got to figure out what we're going to do. So, even living with the fear, living with the denial, and I still need to calm this down a little bit. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do some white or red. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Um, even with all of those emotions and with everything that's going on, it's still a very difficult journey. Um, it's one that it seems like it hits you in the head time after time after time. It feels like your world is just collapsing and it's nothing good is going to come of it. And that's wrong. It does. Good does come. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to take this post box red and I'm doing this whole stencil and what I intend to do is some journaling because these are these are emotions that I had a difficult time with. Um, I just 
especially the denial and the fear. These are, these are the two that were my rough ones. Um, I actually have another one coming up in the next couple chapters that we'll talk about, but denial and fear were the big, were two of the big ones. Um, I wanted to continue living, meaning physically going shopping and going out to dinner and taking long rides and let's go on vacation and oh honey it's Friday night let's get in the car and head somewhere we'll come back on Sunday type of life and that wasn't possible I like that so with the denial that's where I was denying I I thought here yeah, right now you know it doesn't hurt that bad let's go do this well you go and do that and let me tell you you pay for it and it's just so hard to accept the fact that, Cindy, you can't do it like that anymore. And see, now I'm to the point where I can say, you know, I can't do it like that. Back then, I thought my life was over. <laughs> it's just the easiest way to put it. I was, you know, um, my life was over. My and, and to be honest, the life that I knew, my life that I knew, yeah, it was over. It was done. Uh, there is no way at this point um, in the pain that I am in that I would even be able to consider living the life I used to, the active lifestyle. Okay, I'm still a crazy person. I'm still Cindy. Um, back then I wasn't. I was very emotional all over the place. My emotions were high and low and in between and, and I didn't know which way I was going. And, you know, I, I think that's normal for the process that you have to go through when you get into this type of situation. All right, I am going to take a second, dry this up, then we're gonna get these put on, we're gonna get this page to start coming together, and we'll be right back. All right, so I've got it pretty well dry. I've got a, eh, it's dry enough. All right, I decided I'm gonna bring in some of this blue, only I want it lighter. So I'm taking some of this white, Grabbing some blue and just lighten it up a little bit. Come on. And then what I want to do, let's go way too much on it. I just want to take a small one and I just want to start messing around. Mixing around. Playing and having fun and messing around. Yeah, that's what I want. I just want it to kind of again throw that back in the background again and just maybe bring out this red here a little bit and I'm gonna use white to do some accents on it again but I just I need this blue to back it down back it down so um yeah, like I said, these emotions aren't the fun ones to play with. They're very um, difficult to deal with. And I'll be honest with you, the way I dealt with them was through my, uh, one, through my regular journal. This was before I even got into art journaling. Um, my regular handwritten journal that I would sit at night, um, right before I went to bed, I would sit and just dump. I call it a dump. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't come up with that name. Um, who said that? Oh, J uh, Jerry Bellini said it's like a brain dump. And really, that's what I would do. And to this day, I still do. Um, before I go to bed at night, I will sit and it doesn't really have to be, you know, what went on during the day. Oh, I did this and I did that. Sometimes that's what my journal is. It depends. Um, but a lot of times it's a place where I can put down those fears and those feelings and those uh, all of those emotions that range of emotions anything that has to do with you know how I'm feeling that day I like that let's do it to the other side I had to get my fingers in here didn't I I couldn't just do it with just this this doesn't work as well you have to put your fingers in it <laughs> So, you know, I, the, that's one of the ways I coped uh, with these feelings is through my journal. The other way, like I said, was um, getting into art journaling, which, 
you know, that, I didn't, I don't, you know, I never, I've never said I'm an artist, you know, I didn't, I've always been creative, okay, I've always either, I don't know, made dolls or cards or, you know, there for a while stained glass, and I've always been creative in a sense, but I never, ever considered myself an artist. I never took any class until Lifebook um, a couple years ago as far as art was concerned. That was just not something I did. Um, I was never really into drawing. I was never really into, you know, um, this type of creating. It just was not something I had ever done. So, in so many ways, doing this type of creating has helped me um, express myself. It's given me almost like a purpose. Yeah, I can say it's given me a purpose. And my purpose is to share with you guys. That's what makes me happy. If I read a comment that says, Cindy, you inspired me so much, that just, it makes all of this worth it. And at this point, that's what I, that's what I look forward to. I look forward to being able to, you know, help somebody out of those days that's just, um, you know, one of those really bad days. And you have quite a few of them until you learn how to manage them. And that's something that we'll get into as we go along on my story. Okay. So I'm going to dry this up and then these guys are going to come on here. We're going to do a little bit of doodling and journaling and we're going to be good. We'll be right back. All right. So I got it pretty well dry. So here we go. We are going to take our fear and our denial. And this is some Martha Stewart decoupage that I got on clearance. That's almost gone. And let's take our denial. I'm going to put it right here. Now, um, as I'm doing this, I just want to, you know, clarify with anybody new that's watching my videos, these pages are not meant to be perfect. These pages are a way for me, again, to express um, my story, what, it, what I've went through with my story, and how I have handled my story. So, you know, I'm not looking for a perfect, uh, perfectly constructed art page, art journal page. That's not what I'm looking for. I am playing. I am actually working through still um, some of these emotions, not as bad as it was, you know, three years ago when I was going through all the beginnings of this. It's definitely nowhere near that that uh, potent of feelings. Let's put it that way. So um, this is just, again, it's basically just my way to tell you my story of how I've went through this, how I've made it to where I am today. And when I say made it, um, I say that quite literally because when you're going through these emotions, just to wake up in the morning if you get to sleep the night before um, and see another day it, it's you feel like it's an amazing feat it's a something you didn't know if it was going to happen that night when you try to go to bed okay um, meaning that some of these emotions are so difficult to deal with, you, you don't know if you want to live through it. When you're dealing with the pain, you're dealing with all of these emotions, it's difficult. It's very, very hard process. It's a very hard emotion. It's very difficult to see a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's where I'm at when I'm talking about this denial and fear. You're think, you just think, oh my God, I, I can't do this. All right, let me dry it up and we'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up, Ugh, maybe. All right, so here we are with denial. I just wanna put a little bit around the edges of this. Um, just kind of 
bring it all back in. I might actually use some pink and maybe some red. Whoops. So, you know, like I said, at this point, a lot of it is status quo. But um, here is where a lot of the emotions start coming in. And a lot of the confusion and a lot of the fear and, and just being afraid of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? So, unfortunately, this is the process. Um, with the denial, all right, so my first um, thing with the denial is it can't be that bad. And I'm going to write with this Uniball Signal, maybe, maybe not. Okay, we're going to use a white pen. It can't be this bad. And you start to question yourself. Do I really hurt this much? No, it's not permanent. Okay. Um... Denial, more denial. It has to get better. They have to fix it. Or they can fix it, I should say. They can fix it. Right? They went in before in 2010 and they fixed it. They did surgery. Um, when I woke up, I could feel my right foot. So why can't they do it again? No, this, this, what they're telling me is wrong. That's, that was my feelings. Now this, this can't be. What they're telling me is just wrong. Okay. It is fixable. This is what I thought at this time. Okay. That was my thoughts. And, oh, I come off something. I'll figure out where it came off right here. Um, and my thoughts were, you know, it's it's good. It, I know I can fix it. I know, I know, I know, I know they can fix it. All right. I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but it's that strong of an emotion that you just say, uh, uh this this is, you know, mm -mm, you can fix it. Let's, you know, what are you waiting for? All right. I like this. I love I love these um, window markers from Crayola. One of my favorite, favorite art supplies. They're just so fun. And they're like butter. Same with the uh, Mapid Helix um, Peeps. These ones as well. The Color Peep Smoothies. The, they're just so creamy. Alright, so we've got the Denial. Alright, now let's look at the Fear. It's almost like a slap in the face. All you can think of is, oh my God. Um, one of the fears is I can't live in this pain. I can't, I can't do it. it, it it's impossible to do because I hurt so bad. And so, you know, with this fear, I'm still trying to live a normal life. Normal as in, you know, let's go to the doctors, let's go get groceries. Nah, I don't need no help. I can do it. Um, hey, let's go out to dinner tonight after, you know, I've spent all day running from this doctor to that doctor and had this test done and that test done. And... You know, it, the fear, the, the slap in the face when they even think about talking about permanency is just horrific. Okay? So, how am I going to live in this pain? I'm terrified about living in this pain. The second biggest thing is, how am I going to pay my bills?
another fear. I will lose my job. Terrified. 23 years. I spent 23 years of my life in this profession. I don't want to lose my job. I need another seven years and I can retire. All right. Terrified. Completely terrified of pain and losing my job. All right. So I'm going to stop there because that's where we're at with the denial and the fear. How am I going to get through this? And my one answer, art. My second answer, my husband. The other way around, but <laughs> if it wasn't for my husband, I, I don't know where I'd be. So anyways, I hope this gives you something to think about. And if you are not a chronic pain sufferer and you are with someone that is a chronic pain sufferer, I hope this enlightens you a little bit to some of the feelings that they're going through some of the emotions and some of the reasons why they're having these emotions I mean you know I'm, I'm really lucky my kids are grown and gone but if if you're with somebody say a spouse and you've got little kids at home and you know you know you've got all these bills to pay and and that income is in jeopardy and um, you need to, you need to sit down and talk about it. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you what to do in your marriage, but I'm just telling you when it comes to chronic pain, um, these are emotions that the chronic pain sufferer is going through. And these are the emotions that need to be looked at. They need to be talked about. Um, they need to be expressed. Because if not, it just keeps bottling up. All right? So, as always, be kind, have fun, that's what life is all about. Once you get through all this stuff, you get to have fun, okay? And happy creating, and I'll see you on my next chapter. Thanks for watching. Bye!